All right, good morning. This is Mr. Brink Murray, and we are <coughs> in the female reproductive system today. All right, uh, we're going to do the picture first, then we will go and talk about the details later. All right. Um, first of all, first of all, the rectum, just for reference, is where it is back here. Uh, urinary bladder is right here, and of course, the urethra coming out of that. Okay, pubic bone, just to give you a kind of perspective where the hip is here. All right. And so let's start. We have the ovary up here, which is the bean-shaped thing. Then it goes into, there's these little feathery looking things or fingery looking things, which is what fimbria means. Fimbria, fimbria or fimbria means. And that is the uh, little finger things as part of the fallopian tubes. Um, the eggs, when they leave the ovary, do not go directly into the fallopian tube. They kind of have to float here. And these fingers make a current that kind of sucks in the egg into the fallopian tube. All right, then it goes through the fallopian tube or uterine tube, as it's also known. All right, it goes down here and eventually would reach the uterus. Now, the uterus has three layers. There's this inside layer right there. There's this thick layer here and then the outside layer on the outside. Uh, Latin word for uterus is metria. So metrium has to do with the ovary. And the first one would be the endometrium because it's the inside part of the uterus. All right, so that's this inside layer. This is the layer that... Uh, when a woman has a menstrual cycle, this is what prepares to um, make the placenta and where the baby would attach and so forth. But if the egg is not fertilized, then this is what would uh, tear away and be uh, come out as the menstrual flow, and then it would have to rebuild itself. So it's constantly being replaced every 28 days. All right, then the myometrium is this middle layer. Myo means muscle. So this is a muscle part of the metrium. We talk about the contractions that force the baby out of the womb. These are the muscles or the that are contracting. This is the myometrium, the thick layer here. And then finally, on the outside of the uterus, we have the parametrium. Para means like perimeter, means on the outside. So this is the outside layer. It would also be called the visceral peritoneum because it's on the outside of the organ and it's uh, in the abdominal pelvic cavity. But, all right. Um, so after that, uh, we need to... Um, to then down here is the, I want you to leave here, would be the vagina, okay? Now, this part right here where it gets narrow, we'll see it better on the other picture, uh, is called the cervix. Technically, there's an opening here, I believe it's called the cervical canal, but basically, uh, we talk about the opening and the neck area a lot of times as the cervix, just to make it easier, but technically, there's a difference. All right, now at the bottom, there's a slight membrane down here called the hymen, we'll talk about that later. It's perforated, so it allows things to go through it, but it's still there. Okay, and uh, last but not least, we have the clitoris. Okay, the clitoris is a small piece of tissue here. Uh, it has a little cover over it called the prepuce, which is similar to what the penis has. And like the penis, this has erectile tissue uh, that can uh, fill up with blood and uh, when a female becomes aroused. All right, now there's also, we did not label them, but there's a, a labia or folds here. Two folds, one on the outside and one on the inside, major and minor. Uh, fold to skin, which we did not label, but we will uh, talk about later on. Okay. Now, this picture is just more from the front, so you can see the parts of the uh, uterus. Um, so we'll just go through that real quick. Uh, the ovary, once again, is right here. Now, they've kind of separated these, so you can see the parts of the ovary in that. Uh, in the ovary, uh, these are called follicles. The follicles develop, and then right here, you can see where it's opening up, and this would be where the egg actually comes out. Then it goes up and makes a structure called the corpus callosum, which we're not worried about right now, but uh, that uh, structure goes back up here, and then new eggs come, and every month, new eggs will be released, usually one from this side, then one from this side, and, and alternating back and forth. All right, here's the fingers on the fallopian tube, the fimbriae. And then we have the uterine or fallopian tube going down here. All right. Now I'm going to put just letters down here and find them. A up here at the top of this is called the fundus. All right. And that is the top part of the uterus. Then B, the main part in the middle here, is called the body. This is most of where the baby would develop and so forth. And then finally the cervix is down here at the bottom where it narrows down or has a neck shaped. And that's why cervix, just like we have cervical vertebrae, uh, has to do with a neck. All right. Endometrium is going to be the inside layer, or D in here. You can see the inside lining. All right, we talked about that already. E is the myometrium, the thick muscle layer, all the way in between here. they cut different places open so you can see it. All right, parametrium is just going to be on the outside. 
the vagina is going to be this part here. All right. And whoops, that's it. Okay. And so um, basically, that's all that we're we're going to worry about for right now. Uh, notice though, there is this wide. It's called the broad ligament. And that's this sheeting here that holds all this stuff up and supports it, holds it back to the back wall of the body. And this, of course, obviously going to be very important once the baby starts developing because there's going to be a lot of weight and everything involved. And so this broad ligament, so just like a long, skinny ligament like you'd have in your knee or something, is going to help support that. Okay? All right. So that is the labeling. And now we will go to the... All right. So for meal reproductive notes. Uh, hopefully I'm not repeating this. I... Shut off the uh, recorder, so we'll see how this all works out. Okay, number one, uh, the ovaries are the main organ, of course, of the female reproductive system. And just like the uh, testes have an exocrine, uh, things that they secrete out of the organ, uh, as well as hormones that they secrete into the bloodstream, which is endocrine system, so does the ovary. The ovary produces eggs or ovulates the eggs, and they leave the organ, so they're expelled from the... Um, uh, ovary, so that's the exocrine function. They also secrete hormones, estrogen and progesterone, uh, which are part, make it part of the endocrine system, okay? And so they produce those directly into the bloodstream. Now, an ovary contains about 250,000, don't ask me why there's not a zero on the end of that, but Mr. McMurray made a boo-boo there, uh, 250,000 immature eggs, okay? And these are formed fairly early in a young girl's life, okay? Um, so there are lots of lots of eggs, but you will not begin ovulating those usually until about um, any time from 11 to maybe as late as 16 or 17 or even 18. Um, but of those eggs, only about 50 or excuse me, 500 will ever be released. Okay, and so basically, when a woman talks about her biological clock ticking, she needs to have kids. She doesn't have much time left. It's really more a matter of when the menstrual cycle, which allows pregnancy to proceed. Uh, occurs and when, once the hormones that control the menstrual cycle stop the menstrual cycle from happening which is called menopause then she can no longer get pregnant but it's not because there's not enough eggs there are plenty of eggs uh, like I said only 500 out of 250,000 that are there will ever be used so there's kind of overkill there and that's okay because uh, that makes sure she'll have eggs but the main problem is more um, is just when the actual menstrual cycle which prepares the uterus for pregnancy and so forth uh, when that process stops when that stops then uh, she can no longer get pregnant all right uh, B um, we said the eggs develop in follicles we show those little things inside the ovary they kind of develop once it's developed then the mature egg is uh, ovulated or released and that usually happens about every 28 days. And that's, um, that's what the purpose of the menstrual cycle is, to prepare for that egg ovulating and the possibility that it is fertilized and the woman becomes pregnant. All right. Uh, once it leaves the ovary, it goes into the fallopian or uterine tube, but it does not go in there directly. Kind of like we showed on the picture, um, the fallopian tube does not directly connect. Uh, when the egg comes out of the ovary, then you have those fingers of the the fimbriae of the um, fallopian tubes and they create a current which kind of sucks the egg in there but it doesn't always it is possible it could completely miss the fallopian tubes in that month there simply is not going to be an egg okay and so that happens um but uh don't really know exactly why the purpose of that but um there may be one all right fimbriae or fingers creates the current that pulls in the egg uh, many of the eggs will not make it okay um now uh, because it's not a closed system, uh, sexually transmitted diseases like gonorrhea and other things uh, can spread from the reproductive system and they can escape into the peritoneum where they can uh, infect different parts of the abdominal pelvic uh, area and they can cause uh, pelvic inflammatory disease, okay, or PID it's called, uh, and this can lead to sterility, uh, especially if it gets into the outside of the tubes and scars it and cause it to close up the tube or thin gets real thin where the eggs cannot come down so uh, that can be fairly serious okay and it has to do because it's not connected okay once again i'm not sure exactly why it's not connected but that is the way it is all right now once things get in the fallopian tube uh the walls of the, of the fallopian tubes have cilia and their job is to 
push the egg down. So they kind of keep pushing down, keeping a flow going down. And there's also gentle contractions of the walls. And as they do that, they kind of gently squeeze it down. Okay. And so they're going to push the egg downward through the fallopian tube toward the uterus. Now, um, this takes about three to four days all right, for it to get down there. And of that time, once the egg is ovulated, it's only viable for about 24 hours. So basically, uh, if a woman is to get pregnant, uh, they would have to have intercourse sometime about two days before or one day after. There's like a three-day window there uh, that is most likely to um, fertilize the egg. Okay, uh, because after one day at the egg ovulated, it's not available. And if they have intercourse a day or two before they ovulate, then those sperm will still be around and have a possibility of reaching the egg while it's in the fallopian tube. Because fertilization actually happens up in the fallopian tube. Okay, and so not only do the egg uh, sperm have to get into the uterus, then they have to go up the fallopian tubes, and there's two of those, and they don't know which one the egg is in, so it could go either way. And then they're going upstream, basically up the fallopian tube, trying to reach the egg. So that makes it uh, fairly difficult, but also that probably helps thin out weak and defective sperm, uh, at least physically uh, weak or defective, that are trying to swim up there. And it incurs that probably the more likely odds oh, is a healthy sperm that will get there. All right. Now, uh, the uterus, which is also called the womb, if someone talks about the womb, they're really just talking about the uterus. Okay. And it is normally about the size of a pear. Uh, if you turn your hands kind of like this with them, um, that's about the size of the uterus. Okay. Size of a pear, and it's wider at the top, and then you have the narrow neck or the cervix down at the bottom. So uh, basically, that's the normal size. Now, once a woman has a baby, it will have stretched, and just like a balloon, uh, once it's stretched, it's not going to go right back to the same size, so it will become larger. And uh, the, the good news, that's not considered bad news because it's been stretched out, but then on the other hand, uh, the next children that come will usually uh, come out much more easily because the birth canal has been stretched. And usually, uh, for most women, the most difficult birth is the first child, and then after that, it is usually uh, easier because uh, delivery is usually a little bit easier because the uterus and the birth canal have been stretched out and it's easier for the baby to get out. All right, uh, like I said, the uterus is anchored by broad ligaments, those sheet of ligaments that hold it up against the back wall to support it. All right, uh, the endometrium, the inside layer, this is the inner layer where the fertilized egg or embryo implants. And once it implants on the wall, it begins to form the placenta, okay? Part of that is the baby contributes some of that, the developing egg embryo. And some of that is the uterus and the endometrium, okay? The endometrium has all these blood vessels and stuff that will become the placenta around the baby, all right? And approximately every 28 days, the uterus must completely replace its endometrium, okay? And get ready for another possible pregnancy. So basically, it's all set up. It's ready to go. There's that two or three day window. If the message, uh, usually the egg, if it's fertilized, will send a hormone down to the uterus that says, hey, we're ready to go. It's a go, fertilize, let's get it with it, we're gonna have a baby, uh, and it does that. But if it does not get a signal from the egg, the egg is not fertilized, then it's just gonna completely tear off the whole lining. Uh, that's the menstrual flow that comes out, bunch of bloody because of all the blood vessels and stuff as well, with part of that lining, and then it completely replaces that. Okay, so there's some major changes going on, a lot of hormone uh, shifts in this, and so um, obviously that affects the, uh, um, I would say personality, but the uh, uh, attitude and so forth of the woman because there's a lot of hormone things going on. It's a major thing, and it does happen every 28 days, okay? Um, so this is called uh, menstruation or menses, which is when, when uh, a woman ha has the men menstrual flow and is replacing this lining. That's what we're talking about, all right? And basically, this is driven by our hormone levels. Uh, in fact, birth control pills that help kind of control this and to prevent pregnancy, do that by controlling these hormone levels and controlling what happens uh, during that part of the cycle. All right. And like I said, the biologic clock of a woman depends basically on when this menstrual cycle stops. Once the hormone changes that cause the, uh, tell the uterus to set up a uh, shop for pregnant, possible pregnancy, once that goes away, then once again, so does the ability to have kids. And so it's not really so much um, a number of eggs or anything like that. It has to do with lower estrogen levels, which stop the uh, menstrual cycle from happening. All right, 
That's all for this one. We will see you on the next video.